feasibly handsome. <laughs> I don't need a microphone either. I've got one. Maybe we should just do it. No, no. Rejection! Bibbity bobbity. Playing the song. Yeah. But I knew it was there, obviously. Yeah. But 
I didn't realize that it actually had become so Oh, yeah. It's, you know, uh, it was pre, you know, Twitter. This yeah. is pre-Twitter, pre all that. So you're talking about the Daily Mail and the Mirror writing horrible things about Daniel Craig playing Bond. But that gets to a man on set in the Bahamas. Yeah. And it made him, it probably helped the film because it made him very angry. Right. And I think it's in the film, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, if I may swear, it's kind of F.U. to all the, the way he is in that film. Oh, yeah. it's, it's incredible. The yeah. whole film is yeah. just yeah. possibly my favourite of all yeah, the, yeah. the Bond films. Yes, yeah. yeah. right. And I was, a bit of trivia, I was um, in Quantum of Solace, the same character, running character. There was a scene in Quantum of Solace with Bond literally about to go on a mission, and who are you going with? You're going with Carter, and it, him going, oh, oh, not him. And there was a whole little scene, and it was cut 12 days before filming. So it's a running character, kind of John Cleese comedy crap double O agent. Um, but uh, that, my scenes that were cut from the movie are in the computer game, oh, really? which I voiced. And I was voicing them for Sony, for Quantum of Solace, and they said, so how was the shoot? Because the film hadn't come out Quantum. I said, oh, I, heard, I hear it was great. I was still here from Danny occasionally, and uh, it went great, I think. I said, how was your stuff? I went, I'm not in it. They cut me. And they went, what? We were told this was the shooting script. We made the game off the shooting script. So brilliantly, my bits that would have been in the movie are in the computer game. I've never seen them, because I can't play computer games well enough to get to them. <laughs> right. But my son can play big computer games like a demon. And he told me, yeah, I saw your bits, Dan. They were rubbish. <laughs> it's, it's, it's funny, because um, I used to be a... Uh, a producer on um, computer games, yeah. Yeah. and uh, I worked on the Harry Potter yeah. games, right. and uh, we used to get really early scripts yeah. to, to write the games yeah. from, and uh, it was uh, Goblet of Fire, yeah. and we did this whole thing, and uh, we had we had uh, Radcliffe come in, uh, you know, they, they all came in yeah. to, to voice the characters, none of it's in the film. No, that's and, you know, it's kind of great that in a way. You get an alternative experience. Of, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's great. Um, and then you have, just talking about games quickly, but then you have um, things like when, when the Matrix first came out, they, they, they made that as part of the, ah, the actual yeah, Matrix, level, which I think is great. Yeah. Anyway, moving right along, I want to hear you talk about the Matrix. Um, so you've been in a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I, I was really uh, not surprised, but when I looked at the Oh my goodness, yeah. really? You've done so much. Yeah. Well, what, what do you think has been the highlight? I don't say Quantum oh, of the Souls, because this interview no, is going to end no. very uh, quickly. I don't know, it's very difficult. The highlights aren't necessarily the most um, sort of known thing. Someone yeah. just came up to the table, actually, and who liked a show I did for the BBC called Banished, which was written by Jimmy McGovern. A beautiful seven-part drama where I played the lead role in the script by Jimmy McGovern. And doesn't get any better than that. Um, but barely anyone saw it. So it doesn't matter. But when we shot it in Australia, it was an amazing experience. Um, but you know, I've had visits to all the universes, really. I've done my bit in the Doctor Who universe, I've done my bit in the Star Wars universe, in the games, in the Old Republic, and one of the others. And, um, uh, and you know, I've, I've been doing this 28 years, and, and maybe 60% of my life is on stage. 40% in front of the cameras, you know. Yeah. Um, and actually, some of my best experiences, I've kind of played small to medium roles in huge films. Right. And I've played massive parts in tiny films. And some of those have been the best experiences. I, I, um, you know, I did a zombie movie in India called, well, a sequel, The Dead 2. Um, and that was one of the greatest experiences of my life. You know, and I was in every frame of that film, just shooting 3,000 zombies. Um, but it was crazy, and, you know, and some theatre gigs are great, but I love filming ones, to be honest. So I was going to say, what, what do you prefer? Well, the answer to the question I've worked out, I stole this from someone, I can't remember who, when people say, do you prefer doing theatre or film, or what? I always say it's a bit like asking, do you prefer breakfast, lunch or dinner? And the answer is, I just like eating. <laughs> so the answer is, I just like acting, really. Although now, to be honest, I'm just finishing a degree in screenwriting, and I wake up daydreaming about writing now. Right. Um, I think that's just because I'm exhausted <laughs> of acting. So I'm writing a lot, 
and uh, directing a bit and um, still acting to pay the rent, but uh, really my heart and soul are in making things myself, you know. And yeah. I got my first paid writing gig. I wrote two episodes of a big, big show for the History Channel called Coliseum. It's right. an amazing mega million dollar um, uh, drama documentary shot in Morocco. And I wrote two episodes of that. So it's not tell us all about it then. Well, there's not much to tell really, except I wanted to visit set. You know, they, I got this gig, wrote two, uh, two amazing ex stories to write about these real people. One about an emperor, one about a doctor in the Colosseum. True stories. I studied it, had a historian, wrote the thing, and now I'm like, oh my god, they're making these a million dollars an episode. None of it went to the writer. I was going to say, how, how much is it? Oh, about three grand. <laughs> um, uh, and, but I said, I want to visit set. I, yeah. I was seeing the showrunner was sending me pictures of sets of things that came up to me in my little office. Things I thought up were actually there. So I want to visit. He said, we are, we are not flying writers out. We have the A, it's COVID. Yeah. B, we, they're not going to pay for the writers to be on set. I said, ah. Oh. He went, hang on. And two weeks later, he found me a little part to play as an actor. Wow. Not in my own script, in someone else's, but it meant I was there while they were filming my episode. And I got to visit set and sit on the monitor. So funnily enough, that's a real highlight. Well, I was going to say, what, what that's was that? amazing. That's incredible. It was amazing. What, what you saw being created, was it what you saw in your mind? Uh, oh, was it beyond belief? It was so like what I saw, I couldn't believe it. I was finding the art department and shaking all their hands, and they were all Moroccan and didn't understand the word I was saying. But it was like they'd been in my, uh, t well, what used to be my son's box bedroom is now my writing room because he's grown up. Um, and it's exactly what I thought of in that room. It's incredible. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But that, that sounds like a highlight to yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, what, if you were given the opportunity to write something, you know, anything, yeah. what genre, what would you, uh, what's your passion? Well, I'm just coming to do this. I'm finishing my master's degree, and they're like, okay, you have to say what you want to do. You have to kind of put yourself out there, and we'll try and help you. Um, and weirdly, I think I'm. I'm lucky really because what I want to do is not many people like doing what I like doing. I like being a script doctor, they're called. So somebody gives you a script that's not really working yeah. and you don't get any credit for it, yeah. but they give you a few quid to just fix it. And my highlight being what I'm selling myself is that I can guarantee you I can make the dialogue so that actors auditioning for it go, oh yeah, I quite like this dialogue. And I know what actors hate, I know what actors like, and so I can just squeeze and fiddle, and normally it's just trimming. Mm. Um, and so I like being a, what they call a script doctor. Yeah. So there's no glory, but it's, I really like, it's like a chess puzzle, fixing broken scripts. That was, that was my, my first key for BBC right. Radio yeah. 4, yeah. with being a script oh, doctor. Oh, well, there you go. I really love it. Yeah, um, yeah radio is another... I've done about 80 radio plays as an actor, but I've never written one yet, so I want to get off to that. All those money again, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I'm so interested in this yeah. is something that I yeah. do as well. I find hearing that your vision from paper and was exactly or better. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So much joy. That's incredible. It is amazing. Yeah. And then I've made my own little films, and they're, you know, that's your own universe, and you can control that. I'm shooting my first feature film next year for an unbelievably low budget. <laughs> um, but it's a cast of two and a crew of five. We can't go very well. Okay, can you tell us what it's about? Well, I'll have to plug the two short films we've made for it to make any sense. Do that. If you go on YouTube, it don't take much of your time. There's a film called The Magician that you have to put in The Magician brackets 4K, otherwise you just get lots of magicians. Right, okay. So The Magician bracket 4K. Okay, nice, gotcha. That's the film I dared my wife to make, and I produced it and made sure it happened. And then she dared me back, and I made a film called Pear, Care brackets 4K. Otherwise, um, you get otherwise you get, you get lots of hair or stuff. Yeah, other stuff. Yeah. Um, I can't really. Basically, if if you bother to watch those two shorts, which they are set in the same town at exactly the same moment. So as as the stuff in that film is happening, three streets away, this is happening. So I'm always interested. In, we don't know what's happening up the road. Two doors from here, someone's life is changing in some way. Yeah. You know. And over there. 
you know, in a boat, someone's marriage has just collapsed, and over there, someone's having a baby. It's, it's stuff's happening all the time. Um, so, they're two short films, and next year we're going to make a feature film which follows the lead character from each. Um, and believably and not ridiculously, they meet up. And they meet up somewhere hot. So we're going to film it somewhere like Lanzarote. Oh. It's an excuse to, you know, and on you, a budget. You do know that the Isle of Wight can get very hot. I do, I do, I do. But I think we need, like, volcanoes. <laughs> yeah, there's no volcanoes here. Yeah. You can fix it in post. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what I always say? Yeah. I will fix it in post. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's yeah. And um, another highlight of my life has been, uh, which I, I've totally failed today. Not only did my convention agent know it, not successfully get photos here, so they're scrambling around printing them. <laughs> um, well I normally bring a box of the book. I wrote a book okay. uh, which has been a number one bestseller on Amazon and did really well. And I normally have a box of them and I forgot them. But getting that done and out there and the fact that it was really successful and people actually enjoy it and um, that's been amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let's open up the uh, oh, yeah. floor to some questions. Yeah. Because I will talk to you about this stuff oh, all day, good. Well, and I know people get really bored with this stuff. That's so, all right. Opening up the floor, who would like Anyone? to uh, ask some questions? It can be about other things. What else then? Moon Knight. Moon Knight, uh, yeah, touch on that. Yeah, Doctor Who, Sarah Jane Adventures. Sarah Jane Adventures. Uh, the Last Kingdom. Uh, 24. I did say we were going to talk about all this stuff. No, there's no time. Anyone have any questions? Yes, come up. Come on, use a microphone. Yes, here we go, he's got his own mic. Yeah. I can't prepare. Okay. Sarah Jane Adventures. Sarah Jane Adventures. Uh, to the lovely uh, Sarah Jane Fag. Yeah. Um, oh, we can't hear you. Oh, thanks, Mike. Oh, yeah. It's professional. You can tell off the tech, can't you? Yes, the uh, Sarah Jane uh, Slack. Yeah. Yeah. Is this one? No one wants to hear my voice anyway. Third mic, oh. Yes, this one actually worked. Yay! So, on the um, show, you also had yeah, the Sarah Jane Slack, you had uh, the voice of. Um, oh, Alexander Armstrong as the, uh, yeah. the computer. What was it like working with a disembodied voice? Ah, well, a uh, disembodied voice of um, Alexander Armstrong was fine because it's just a voice, so it's the same, you know, you've got a first assistant director reading out lines. I've done these films like Dragonheart, I starred in Dragonheart Vengeance, which is doing the entire movie, co-starring me and Helena Bonham Carter as the dragon. Um, I had 90 pages with Helena, and of course she wasn't there. It was a tennis ball on a stick. Um, that's a challenge. Um, but a kind of that's the whole point, I always think. I, any actors who moan about that, I think something's wrong. Because the idea is we should be doing like children in a playground who say, let's play Boys and Indians, let's play Doctors and Nurses, let's play whatever the hell we want to play. And it, that's the bit of us that we're being paid to do. So when someone says, that tennis ball's a dragon, anyone who has a problem with that is in the wrong game. I'm like, yeah, that tennis ball's a dragon. That's the point. So it was lovely. And we've, I've just signed on to do Dragon Heart 6. Yes, they've got to number 6. I'm doing Dragon Heart 6 in 18 months. Yeah. Any other questions? Speak now, forever hold your peace. Speak now or hold my peace. Yeah. Well, looks like uh, that's it. In the stunt that's it. Get <laughs> actors to talk about themselves; they'll be happy. That's the only reason people get into yeah. acting, isn't it? That's why they do those warm-up exercises with their favourite word: me, 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 <laughs> me, 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 me. Absolutely. Look at Clive Mantle over there, ladies and gentlemen. Look at him. I'm looking good. God. Any questions, Clive? I, he asked me what it's like to be famous, and I'm going to Google the answer. <laughs> I think we should get both of you up and you can play um, uh, Robin Hood. Do you yeah, see Robin that's Hood? right. A Robin Hood never happened. Yeah, <laughs> uh, not for me. No one can top it. But you're an actor. Yes, exactly. Right, so, well, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure.
Thank you. Big round of applause. Thank you. Turn this off for you.